Donut Economy Action Lab, or DEAL, is a uh, collaboration platform that was established in 2019 with the aim of putting donut economic, uh, economics, as developed by Kate Roworth, into praxis. A key output from uh, DEAL is the methodology called City Portraits, a uh, tool for transformative involvement and action in cities. As usual, Amsterdam is a front runner in the sustainability business and um, was one of three cities to pilot this, uh, this methodology. Arkam, or Architekturcentrum Amsterdam, was involved in this process, and Indira van de Kloster, which is director of Arkam, Arkam is here to share her experience, I hope, on some... Uh, there you are. <laughs> So the title of your talk is uh, Amsterdam, Donut City, Facts, Fictions and Design Opportunities. So welcome to you, Indira. I understand that in times of uh, pandemics and uh, climate change and challenges, uh, the Donut City economics are maybe much more uh, important and vital for uh, resilient and sustainable cities. So your conference is very, very well timed indeed. Well, um, I will do a very short introduction on uh, on Arkham and, uh, and the Architecture Center, and then let's explain more about the Amsterdam Donut City, uh, show some examples of the Donut City in progress, and then end with some opportunities and challenges that might also be very uh, relevant for other donut economic cities and also uh, to the Grundigaya um, uh, development that's happening in Oslo. Uh, so Arkham is the Amsterdam Architecture Center. Uh, it has been around for about 35 years. And what we do basically is uh, uh, organizing debates, uh, events, talks, exhibitions, walks, anything in and around the city that um, uh, um, comments, explains, informs, uh, discusses uh, the city developments in smaller or uh, uh, bigger scales with as much people as possible. So that's the professional community, but also the policy makers, also the broader audience, uh, inhabitants, tourists. So uh, we try to um, connect to all the different uh, uh, target groups to be able to discuss the, the Amsterdam region um, uh, spatial uh, challenges uh, as broadly as possible. Um, maybe good to start with is, is that uh, the national ambition for the Netherlands is to be fully circular by 2015. At 50, sorry. So the construction sector is seen as an important link in this regard because of its large share in the use of materials, but also because of the possibilities it offers to other ambition, ambitions, such as energy transition and the densification of cities. Uh, Amsterdam has been named the first donut city. Uh, I think it was the Guardian who coined the, uh, the news first. But of course, there are more cities now. Uh, I think even more than these five, but I like this um, uh, this image uh, to, 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 to show how and where other cities are also emerging donut cities. And as you can see, and as um, uh, and the, uh, uh, the moderator also said, Amsterdam is seen as one of the uh, front runner city. So uh, there are quite a lot of expectations connected to that. Uh, for example, in the Guardian, it was mentioned that um, the the, Oxford, the the donut city will guide Amsterdam out of the economic mess and out of the coronavirus pandemic. Uh, it will help us and guide us to rebuild the city in a post-COVID-19 world. That are, of course, huge expectations, not only by the city of Amsterdam and its citizens, but also worldwide. At the same time, Alderman Marike van Doornik, who is um, uh, responsible for uh, spatial planning and also sustainability, says uh, the donut economy is, economy is not a hippie way of looking at the world. Uh, it is um, a way to kind of change the systems and structures that we are used to and to find new ways of dealing with the problems we have. So this is a, a BBC reel that I was planning to show you. It's a five-minute uh, 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 movie on uh, the donut economics and uh, the specific uh, um, and goals for 
for the Amsterdam Economic City. I will skip that now, but the organization has the link, so uh, maybe they can send it to you afterwards. I think uh, time-wise, it's better not to show it. And also, of course, you are all experts on donut economics already, so I don't need to explain it. But what's much more in, important or what's the, uh, the gist of, uh, of the donut economic is, of course, the four basic questions that also led Kate, um, Kate uh, uh, to um, um, define the Amsterdam donut. So what would it mean for people of Amsterdam to thrive? What would it mean for, let me see, for Amsterdam to thrive within its natural habitat? What would it mean for Amsterdam to respect the well-being of people worldwide? And what would it mean for Amsterdam to respect the health on the whole planet? So these are uh, the, the, the four donut challenges on different scales. And uh, Kate Rayworth um, uh, designed an Amsterdam donut, which was derived from the, let's say, the, uh, the international donut. And um, after doing some research on what are the, the, the most uh, important uh, threats coming towards Amsterdam within the donut economic theory, which of course is that on the outside, we don't want to do anything in, in Amsterdam or in the world that would damage the planet. And on the inside, we don't want to uh, plan anything that will damage people, their health or their happiness. Uh, so the Amsterdam donut is basically more or less the same as the uh, universal donut, but it has some different uh, um, uh, uh, focus points. Now, this was all in uh, April 2020. Uh, uh, when the, the Amsterdam donut city was being pronounced, and this was, of course, just one or two months after the pandemic had started. So uh, at first it wasn't very well picked up, at least not in Amsterdam, because we were all doing different things and trying to adapt to this totally new world. But uh, for us at Arkham, it was kind of connected to a problem, uh, to a series of programs we had done before. And uh, one of them was the Green Wedges Parliament. So the Green Wedges are the green fingers around um, uh, Amsterdam. Uh, I think Oslo has them too, right? Uh, uh, which are called uh, the Green Wedges, and uh, we did the Urban Fringes Labs. And the one, the, the one research was based on how can we protect the green areas around uh, Amsterdam better? How can we make them more resilient towards the pressures of urbanization? And the Urban Fringes Lab was uh, focused on how can we make the, the, the frontiers or where the red uh, zones and the green zones meet more uh, qualitative in, uh, in, in, in architectural and uh, urban quality. Because usually uh, both uh, 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 quantities like the green areas and the red quantities uh, tend to be less in quality, become kind of yeah, fuzzy areas. So how can we design them better? And for the Green Wedges Parliament, we uh, appointed uh, uh, some 14 people who uh, were uh, asked to be the voice only of the Green Wedges, so not their own professions, although they come from various parts in, in, in the profession and uh, the citizen groups, but only to talk with the voice of the green areas. And this set up a, a quite a, a different way of looking at the area. So they, they went walking around the different areas, and in the end, they set up, uh, as you can see here on the right side, a manifest, which uh, had 10 points of what we can do to make sure that these green areas are better protected. Well, that, that led to the, uh, the Urban Fringes Lab, where on five cities we looked how these green wedges actually meet the, green, the, the red areas and how we can uh, get more quality into those. And so, uh, to, to get back to the donut cities, Within these two programs, we got lots of tools and ideas and uh, uh, images for how to design for biodiversity, for local production, for climate change, for recreational areas, and for designing shadow deserts or uh, heat islands, uh, or the protection of those, which are actually quite important elements of the donut city as well. So it was quite a, a, a obvious uh, to us that we would organize an exhibition afterwards to show uh, how this circular city, this donut city Amsterdam, would actually look like once it has uh, would have been realized. So this is in Dutch. I don't have the English words, but um, a beast. It's, it's the beast. It's the citizen. It's the company, and it's the uh, the, the policy maker. So we had these four perspectives on uh, what it would mean to live in a donut city. And uh, of course, uh, there is this uh, gradual progr progress towards 2050 with these universal 
uh, or at least national, but more or less universal uh, uh, aims to be completely climate adaptable, to be completely uh, circular and uh, to uh, function uh, solely on solar energy. Get back to that later. So where are we now? Uh, since 2015, because the, the, the donut economy uh, and the donut model, model in Amsterdam is connected to the uh, circular agenda, which already was launched in 2015. So since then, uh, small projects, community projects have been set up, uh, which are called since last year, the Amsterdam Donut Coalition, in which uh, uh, small uh, uh, projects have been realized. So for example, there is this uh, uh, um, uh, project where company clothing is being transformed into sheeting, which is, uh, you know, for ships. Um, uh, or there is this uh, project where local garbage is being transformed into the energy for the Johan Cruyff uh, Arena or st football stadium. And there is this project where uh, uh, local market sellers become more plastic aware uh, and of the amount of plastic they use. And uh, by now this um, uh, market is completely plastic free. There are also small community projects and it's nice to see how they actually design their own uh, communal uh, gardens themselves and how this also leads to maybe a different kind of aesthetic, which is uh, also one of the conclusions that uh, came from the Donut City uh, exhibition we did that in this donut model or the circular uh, model, we probably will need to get used to a completely different aesthetic. And this is one of them, but it's of course quite nice. Then there is, uh, for example, this project, which is a, a, a local wood supply uh, um, company who uh, collects the trees and gives them back to architects and designers to, to make local uh, uh, products of that. So that means that, for example, we had one at our uh, own exhibition space in uh, on the Waterloo, uh, on the Oosterdok area. So uh, we had benches that were made actually from trees taken from the Oosterdok area. So it becomes kind of local and local again. Uh, on a big, uh, bigger scale, we have, for example, this school, which is interesting. It's a primary school, it's in wood, it's circular, it's reusable, it's made with living labs in local communities uh, to make new networks, it's a kind of a micro input. So uh, these are all kind of learning um, opportunities to, 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 to practice on this 100% uh, donut city. And then even a little bit bigger is uh, the Pampas Island, maybe some of you know, which is an island inside the Aymir. So it's uh, completely isolated in water. It has uh, had a, a military function all the time. So it's quite uh, easy, but not that easy to make it pathartic and to find to make, make, a, uh, make it completely self-sufficient in all sorts of ways. Now, what the city of Amsterdam has learned so far is that upcycling of building materials uh, compared to other materials is actually much more difficult than expected and, and probably you will recognize that it has to do with issues like certifications, uh, warrants and also the ownerships of cost who's going to pay for all this transformation of materials is uh, giving these certification and warrants. Uh, also, uh, it has become much more uh, obvious that uh, uh, circularity materials is not only a local but also a national matter so it's not everything is can can be uh, solved on a local scale sometimes materials need to come from much further away sometimes uh, the waste needs to go much further away from Amsterdam and all these kind of logistics uh, um, uh, are quite complicated in the building industry and then uh, we are only at the beginning of digital solutions to connect demand and supply and it, it needs an ever uh, um, effort, uh, ever continuing effort to, to, to develop the systems and the solutions and digital possibilities. So um, um, we then looked into the plans that were uh, that are being made at the moment for the future of Amsterdam. So I'm going to show you a few of you uh, of the of the the bigger developments in in Amsterdam, and one of them is the Schinkelbuurt in Amsterdam, which has uh, um, the capacity of 11,000 dwellings. Of course, there's also offices and. Um, uh, uh, cultural educational uh, uh, spaces, but it's mostly housing and it's uh, uh, due to 2025, 20, 2030. And uh, uh, in this project, there is to focus on how sports and recreational fields can actually also um, um, 
suit the demand for uh, 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 shadow and, 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 and coolness in the city. It's also a way to retain water when there are um, uh, peaks in water floods. It's an underground parking system, so as to allow the cars, the cars to stay away from the, the upper ground levels. It's an underground waste sy system. It's climate adapted, has so solar energy, and, and there are no cars, allow uh, no cars allowed, as I said. Another one is uh, Centrum Eiland in Amsterdam. 4,000 dwellings and uh, actually uh, 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 happening quite soon. In uh, two years, uh, it should be more or less finished. Uh, many of the building activities can already be seen uh, on site. Um, and one of the buildings is uh, the entrance building, uh, which has been selected uh, recently, which is supposed to be a sustainable, circular, nature inclusive, which of course is also very important, reusable and has 60 rental houses in it. Another example is Sluisbuurt in Amsterdam, 5,500 dwellings, um, also to be uh, circular uh, with renewable energies, uh, with uh, the bank standards. Uh, I think that's quite a Dutch thing, but it means almost energy neutral. Maybe it's a kind of international as well. Uh, nature inclusivity and uh, all the other uh, uh, elements that need to be in, in the donut model. And this is then the extra large version uh, which um, um, plants or houses 70,000 dwellings and lots of uh, uh, other functions and programs as well, and is meant to uh, be ready in 2040. Now you can see on the, uh, the, the bottom right, there you can see the, the, the historical uh, structure of Amsterdam with the canals. So that's probably the area you know, and you can see uh, uh, in the, where, the, where the, the water is kind of making this curve on the, the bottom side where the, the central station is. So just to give you some sort of a location of the place. So you can see how huge this area is. And of course, the 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 real the the, uh, the, the test of the donut uh, uh, model is actually in this plan, uh, where we should be able to use everything we have learned in the previous projects to come together and to make it completely circular and sustainable. Now, what does the municipality of Amsterdam say about this port city? It's, it's Havenstad, you know, so it's port city. The, the the translation it says it represents an opportunity. Now, and this, of course, is something that uh, should make us a bit, little bit alarmed because uh, by 2040, 2050, we are so close to these national uh, uh, goals of being completely uh, uh, circular and, 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 and uh, climate uh, um, uh, resilient that it, it must be much more than, a, than an, an opportunity. It should be like the epitome of, of, of the, the policy. At the other hand, uh, this is the picture on the right below shows uh, also, uh, Port City or Havenstad is not like an isolated case. It's connected to the whole harbor area, to the North Sea on the left, and to a much bigger chain of industry um, uh, and, and, and ownership of other municipalities uh, connected to it. So it's not something that the city of Amsterdam can do by itself all alone. So what has been done so far? Um, the city has set circular goals in tendering procedures, so all the projects I just showed you um, had these uh, circular goals inside the tendering procedures, which is uh, uh, actually quite effective, of course, to be able to kind of sustain in a longer term uh, the aims that are being set now. Uh, it has the introduction of material passports so that we can see what materials are being used in every building or every uh, urban area, how they can be uh, uh, reused and uh, where, they can, where they came from. Uh, it is, uh, they have set a project to, to considering value assessment of building materials. And uh, uh, there's a focus on area development strategies based on the ideas that uh, small uh, scale um, um, uh, experiments are of course very, very useful, but we need to scale up to make it more effective. Uh, and in, in the scaling up, yes. In, I think your time is uh, about to run out. Oh, okay, I have just a few things left. So uh, this is the program in which is uh, uh, connected. Uh, ambitions, uh, well, uh, are of course connected to the donut economy. But I think what is important, uh, as you also asked me to say something about uh, what are the threats, and maybe the, the most important thing 
is that the donut model, and that would also maybe be uh, interesting uh, to connect to the to the Grande Gaia de um, uh, development. I'm not quite sure how this uh, exactly works out, but it's not a spatial model. It's uh, an economic model. It's a social model, but it's not connected to an, a spatial model. And so now there is um, uh, many efforts going on into connecting the donut model into the Amsterdam 2050 strategic plan, because that is actually the only way to make sure that all also when government or municipality uh, boards change, when plans change, that these uh, aims and these goals for um, um, uh, a donut uh, ambitions are actually being uh, executed. So uh, in yellow, I marked all the threats and uh, weaknesses in what we are, what we still need to do. And I think by the time that we keep on uh, realizing this project, we are probably uh, uh, capable of learning very much from the Gronikaya movement as uh, you are way ahead of us in that respect. So thank you very much. I'll stop sharing now. Thanks a lot. <laughs> Thanks a lot, Indra. Uh, as usual, it's uh, very, um, always very uh, inspiring to hear you guys from Amsterdam. You know, I think you're always one step ahead of uh, <laughs> most of the other cities. Uh, uh, yeah, we have a little bit shorter time, but uh, maybe a couple of short questions uh, about this circularity and the donut economy, which in your in your Amsterdam seems to be kind of inter inter uh, mixed together. And uh, do you, how, how do you, sometimes they make some confusion because both have like uh, the picture of both models are kind of circles. <laughs> and, uh, yes. but they are different models, they're different way of thinking, so thinking and, and a circular, circular economy is mostly about addressing the material use in the cities uh, and, 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 and donut economy, of course, addresses the whole picture uh, of sustainability. Exactly. Is that according to exactly. what you, how you think too? Or? Exactly, yeah, and, and, and that's the that's the biggest challenge. That that's why I mentioned that the donut economy is a social and a um, and an economic model, but not a spatial model. In a spatial model, it would be horrifying to have a a, 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 a big black hole in the middle. You know, like the center is where everything collides, where everything comes together. So. Uh, it's not a way of, of thinking in spatial terms. So the, uh, that, that's, that, that's really important to get the two together because uh, the, the donut economy as such is maybe more like a mindset. It's a, it's a series of uh, ambitions and strategies to get to a circular and socially equal city, but it's not a spatially uh, attractive cities yet. It, it needs to have uh, uh, other plans and programs connected to the donut model to make that work. Which is what what is happening at the moment in mm. uh, in in Amsterdam, and also the the donut model is connected to the circular agenda in Amsterdam, not to the spatial agenda. So mm. you can see what you mentioned is right. It's it's uh, it's it, it needs some tweaking and some connecting to make it uh, uh, fully functional. Yeah, yeah, and the circular strategy is mostly aimed at uh, addressing the ecological part of the of the the, the ceiling of the donut model. I exactly. Mm. Exactly. Yeah. Okay, I think we have to uh, actually uh, close up this uh, this uh, session or your your part of this uh, seminar now to continue. So uh, thank you very much. Yeah, I would love to stay, but it's okay. all in Norwegian, right? So uh, <laughs> I, I wish you a nice uh, day and uh, uh, lots of wisdom and uh, uh, insights. Thank you very much for having me. Thank you very much. Bye bye. Bye bye.